Thank you. <clears throat> so uh, if we could go to the next slide, I wanted to thank um, people who contributed to, uh, to this presentation. My co-chair, Gail Jarvik, great input from the panel members, Larry, Susan, and Lisa. I, thank, I would like to thank them. And I also got some input from the Return of Results Working Group, which the members are listed here. So uh, I, I'm just going to briefly tell you about the evolution of ROR in Emerge and then talk about some future directions. So next slide, please. And uh, next, I think in the initial um, uh, return of results deliberations uh, in phase one, obviously the unique thing was return of results in the context of the EHR, and this group uh, kind of uh, summarized its recommendations uh, in this paper in genetics and medicine. Uh, looking at a return of results that may vary in the context of each site or other factors such as age, highlighting the importance of the need to generate evidence of clinical validity and actionability before returning results, what are the uh, appropriate methods of uh, return of results, and the need to, um, uh, and to obtain opinion across diverse sites and also input from lay community and advisory bodies. So, so this group kind of started the process. Next slide, please. And then in phase two, there was clearly a focus towards implementation. And uh, this is being done in site-specific projects at each site and also uh, at network projects. And this is just a, not a full but a partial listing of the genomic medicine pilot projects that are being undertaken just to show you the favor of uh, these um, uh, pilots. Some are uh, including genetic risk scores, for example, for macular degeneration or for uh, myocardial infarction. Others are using just single SNPs, uh, ApoL1, for example, or HFE or Factor V Leiden. Uh, Geisinger is doing a, a study of whole genome sequencing in trios for diagnostic odysseys. And then several of the pediatric sites are looking at uh, returning CYP2D6 or hypothetical CYP2D6 results to uh, patients or parents. Next slide, please. So this is uh, an example of uh, an EHR-based genomic medicine pilot study. Uh, myocardial infarction is a leading killer of uh, people in the United States. Uh, it often presents as sudden death. We do very poorly with conventional risk factors for predicting myocardial infarction. So the population implications are huge. And if there's any way, any way, however modest, but we can improve the ability to refine risk stratification, that has huge implications. And therefore, we are conducting this pilot study for the myocardial infarction gene study uh, of giving patients um, a genetic risk score based on 28 SNPs that are related to susceptibility versus just giving them conventional risk factor information. And this is com communicated by a genetic counselor using the electronic medical record. And they follow up with an MD visit. And then we assess them at three and six months for endpoints such as LDL cholesterol, weight, activity, diet changes, and also some other uh, assessment of how patients understand these results and how, what they do based on these results. Next slide, please. And this is, these are a few examples of network-wide projects. You heard a lot about Emerge PGX. I won't go into that. Uh, we are trying to assess the phenotypic correlates of copy number variation and, and, uh, lo and even larger chrom chromosomal abnormalities, uh, what the phenotypic uh, correlates are in the medical record. And uh, this was al already highlighted, the project to look at uh, uh, hemochromatosis variants. Um, it illustrates the power of Emerge in that we have a total of of 1459 individuals across the network that have one or the other of these variants. And so we can look at pleiotropy and phenogens. Next slide, please. Next. And so uh, for return of results, there's a perfect storm in a way because there's been so much investment by institutions and biorepositories. And this has coincided with the High Tech uh, uh, Act and the, and the need to implement electronic medical records. Uh, and, then, and then the remarkable advances in genome sequencing. So all of these factors are really going to throw at us for the next many years, the issue of return of results. Next slide, please. And so unique, uh, the, the Emerge, Emerge Network is uniquely uh, placed to address some of these issues, not only in the context of genomic discovery, uh, which we already discussed, um, the, the many uh, uh, questions we can answer in terms of pleiotropy or longitudinal phenotypes, 
but also in implementing genomics in the electronic medical record, whether it's storing the data, visualizing it, uh, linking it to decision support, dealing with incidental findings, reinterpretation, looking at outcomes. And then this, um, these kind of somehow merged together in the learning EHR paradigm that was alluded to earlier. And so I think eMERGE is uh, uniquely positioned to do both um, the discovery, implementation, and some of the uh, uh, as aspects that are in between these two paradigms. Next slide, please. And in the context of discovery, uh, I think this is a huge area. I, I can't really summarize it in one slide, but in the context of the EHR, the questions are, were already discussed in the previous presentations, uh, documentation, the EHR, communication to family members, uh, the unique uh, problems in the pediatric uh, setting, what are patient preferences, what about consent, the mechanism and timing of ROR, and the incidental findings. So all of these are important questions. And uh, together with CESAR, we had the CESAR cohort uh, consortium, we had some initial deliberations, and uh, Gail is leading an effort to summarize some of these recommendations in a manuscript that is nearly complete. Next slide, please. In the context of implementation, obviously there's a question of what could be returned. And you could think of it uh, as uh, listed there or in the, and the binning paradigm suggested by Berg and colleagues. Uh, we could return copy number variation, uh, recessive mutation, single nucleotide variants that are relevant to disease susceptibility, or pharmacogenomics, or genetic risk scores, as we mentioned. And then, of course, the whole um, issue of sequencing and what comes out of sequencing actionable variants as well as incidental uh, findings. Sequencing can be genome-wide sequ uh, or whole exome or targeted. There's a fair bit of effort then to uh, ascertain the clinical validity of these um, findings. And so a, a jury concept where medical experts and others decide um, on that aspect, the need for this to be clear, certified if it's going to be uh, in the medical record. And sometimes we will also need uh, to resort to statistical modeling and to, to really create uh, the correct uh, statistic for what the genetic variant or the collection of variants implies for risk. And this has to be integrated in the EHR, and then we have to deal with the LC issues. And some of the legal aspects that were highlighted were actually summarized in a paper we uh, wrote in the EHR team issue, and I would refer um, panelists to, the, to that uh, manuscript. Uh, the question of storage and reinterpretation, again, very important when we are looking at in, in uh, the context of implementation and uh, the clinical decision support uh, issues, as well as then trying to assess outcomes of all of this effort, uh, uh, perhaps initially just as implementation outcomes, but of course longer term in real clinical outcomes as to that are patient-centric. Next slide, please. And so these are some ideas that were thrown around um, uh, for developing a framework where we could assess some of these challenges. For example, let's talk about whole genome or whole exome sequencing, as Debbie mentioned. And, and the unique aspects would be the multiple phenotypes that we could look at uh, to correlate with this data, the issues of penetrance, pleiotropy, pediatric considerations, pathogenicity. All of these uh, eMERGE could uniquely address uh, we could um, think about targeted sequencing. This could be of the 56 ACMG genes. Uh, again, issues related to pathogenicity, informing kin, et cetera. There's this um, very widely used genetic testing in the clinics, which is um, usually doing candidate gene panels. Uh, for example, at our institution, we do a whole lot in, in terms of cardiomyopathies, hypertrophic or dilated. We talk about aneurysms, aortic aneurysm syndromes. Uh, lo uh, sudden death syndromes, pediatric syndromes. So these are often very expensive. They take months to come back, and uh, there, there's uh, perhaps uh, uh, an area uh, where eMERGE could contribute in, in focused uh, genomic medicine pilot projects. And of course, we shouldn't uh, forget high-density genotyping, which has been our forte for eMERGE. And many of the sites not only have common variants, but also with, uh, with a more affordable rare variant uh, uh, chips, uh, there's a fair bit of data on rare variants as well. So uh, correlating these to EMR derived phenotypes would be quite useful. Next slide, please. 
and uh, I think I'm going to quickly go these because these were very nicely discussed uh, within the framework we have of EHR implementation. We have to address uh, participant privacy and potential vulnerability to adverse social consequences, and therefore uh, appropriate consent to include genomic data in the EHR has to be there. We discuss recontact uh, to ascertain preferences and over time, and how this could be done electronically. Uh, I think is again an area ripe for in, in investigation. Next slide. And we of course need to learn more about how stakeholders perceive all of this activity, whether they are uh, patients, parents, guardians, uh, family members, care providers, laboratorians, investigators, or biorepository scientists. Next slide please. And I would submit that the Emerge Consortium as a whole, and within Emerge, the ROR Working Group, really is the final transducer of many of these activities for us then to be at the leading edge of implementing genomics. Whether we uh, interact with payers or regulatory bodies, with ACMG or EGAP, with other NHGR activities such as ClinGen, ROR, or CSER, and with uh, other uh, entities that are looking at uh, making genomic information scalable, uh, machine readable, and thereby uh, in, can be integrated into the medical record. So I think we have a unique uh, potential strategically uh, position in this area. And my last slide is to summarize the unique features of Emerge to address these knowledge gaps and challenges, the linkage to the linkage to EHR with deep and diverse phenotypes, the diversity of clinical settings and electronic medical records, the diversity of genomic information ranging from sequencing to high density genotypes, the ability to look at best practices for implementation, and finally a cohort at this point of more than 50,000 that includes pediatric patients. So I'm going to stop there. And uh, Larry, you can continue even with the same microphone. <laughs> <laughs> 